this is an instructional video about how to use a traction splint. Uh, traction splints are used for patients that have uh, mid-thigh femur fractures. Uh, there are several contraindications for a traction splint. Uh, the first being an injury within one to two inches of the knee or the ankle because that, uh, the use of the traction splint in that situation can cause harm to the knee and ankle. The second is injury to the knee, hips, or pelvis because the traction splint is pulling the leg out and straightening it to reduce the pain of a femur fracture. But if there's also a hip or pelvis fracture, uh, that can cause a lot of damage to those bones. And lastly, a partial amputation with bone separation and distal limb connected only by marginal tissue. Uh, this can obviously be an issue because if the leg is partially amputated and you are then applying traction, it can cause that amputation to become a lot worse. Um, there are two main parts of a traction splint, the actual splint itself and the ankle hitch, which is applied around the ankle. Uh, the actual splint itself consists of five different straps, the top one being the ischial strap, which is applied first and used as an anchor so that the traction splint stays connected to the leg. Um, then there are four main straps going down the leg that are numbered uh, one through four and have printed on them the location of where it should be positioned on the leg. Then there's the bottom half of the splint, which includes the actual traction, mechanical traction device, and the kickstand. So, the steps for applying a traction splint, I'm going to list over them, and then I'm actually going to perform the traction splint on a patient. So there are 10 main steps. The first is applying direct and manual stabilization, followed by direct manual traction. You then test for PMS, um, in the injured leg. Uh, fourth, you prepare and adjust the splint length and you measure that against the non-injured leg. It should extend about four to six inches past the foot on the non-injured leg. Uh, next, you position the splint under the injured leg, right under the butt. Um, you then apply a proximal security device, which is that ischial strap up at the very top of the leg. You then apply the, prox or the distal securing device, which is, as I said before, this handy ankle hitch. You then apply mechanical traction, which is actually using the traction splint. You position and secure the support straps, which are the four other straps that I showed earlier. And lastly, you reevaluate PMS on the injured leg to make sure that there haven't been any changes with the motor or sensory function. Uh, we are now going to show you how to actually apply the traction splint to a patient. So this task requires uh, two uh, EMTs, so I have my assistant Alina here to help me. Uh, the first step of applying the traction splint is to provide direct manual stabilization and then direct manual traction. So the stabilization prevents that uh, femur fracture from getting any worse and then the traction helps to alleviate some of that pain. The next thing that we are going to do is check PMS, so pulse, motor, and sensory function on the feet uh, so that we have a baseline of what the patient was like before uh, applying the splint. First, we are going to check pedal pulses on both feet. All right, once you have a pulse, you're going to check for motor function. So ma'am, can you please wiggle your toes for me? All right, and can you please push down on my hands and pull up? And while we're doing this, we're checking to make sure that it's equal between the two feet and that they're able to do everything. So then we're going to check sensory functions. So ma'am, can you please uh, close your eyes or look away? Um, and then you're going to ask the patient to identify which toe you are touching without them looking. So which toe am I touching? Big toe. Which toe am I touching? Pinky toe. All right, fantastic, thank you. It is very important to remember to check PMS because you need a baseline of how the patient was before you applied the intervention. So the next step of applying the traction splint is to measure the splint against the uninjured leg so that you can make sure that the length is appropriate. When there's a femur fracture, that leg often ends up uh, contracting in so it's shorter uh, than a, their normal leg length. And part of the goal of the traction splint is to lengthen that leg back out and pull that bone uh, to relieve pain. So you're going to put this uh, padded part of the traction splint right under uh, the bottom part of the butt, top part of the leg, and using these black spinning knobs, you are going to turn them so that you can adjust the length of the traction splint to be about four to six inches past the length of the foot. 
And then once you have your desired length, you're going to spin them to the right to tighten them back up. Also, part of getting the traction splint ready is making sure that your straps are placed in the correct positions so as not to go over the actual femur fracture or over the knee. So you can position those properly before moving back over to the other side or you can do it once you've moved back over. So once the traction split is positioned underneath, you're going to do the ischial strap, which means to go as high up on the leg as possible and should be rather tight because this is the main anchor for the splint to the leg. Uh, once that is attached, you're going to take your ankle hitch and attach that to the ankle. The ankle hitch has uh, several parts. It has the main part, which is going to go around the ankle itself, and then the strap, which hooks and is underneath uh, the bottom part of the foot. This is what is actually going to attach to the split. So, slide that around the ankle and secure it. So, to finish applying the ankle hitch, you're going to take the clip and clip it, making sure that the clip is on the side of the foot. You can then raise the kickstand on the traction splint just by pushing. And also to lower it later, you're just going to pull this tab and it lowers. So raise the kickstand. You then need to loosen this. This is actually what's going to pull traction. So once again, you pull and it loosens. You're going to hook um, the hook onto the ankle hitch. Uh, some devices have a ring, others just have a gap in the banding. Once that is done, you're going to spin the metal wheel to the right to apply the traction and you're going to continue applying traction until the patient's two legs are the same length or until the pain is relieved. So ma'am, how does that feel? That's good. That's good? All right. So now that this is done, uh, my partner can stop holding the manual traction uh, because we are now having mechanical traction. So once the manual or the mechanical traction is applied, you can go ahead and strap the rest of your straps. So the top strap, um, and these should be rather tight. And once again, you need to ensure that you are not going over the injury. So we're going to say that our injury is about here. Also very important that you never strap over the knee. So gap for the injury and then gap for the knee. You can then uh, position the other straps. They might have slid around some um, throughout everything. So you can reposition them. They have Velcro on both sides to make this rather easy. And strap them up. Uh, you might need to lower the traction. So once all of your straps are repositioned and hooked around the patient, you ensure that the traction is still steady. So you can apply more traction if necessary. If the patient has complained of any more pain or it's come loose somehow. At this point, you are done applying the traction splint itself, but you have to check PMS one more time to make sure that there have been no changes in pulse, motor, or sensory, and if so, they should be noted, documented, and uh, attempted to be fixed if at all possible. So once more, we are going to check pedal pulses. We are going to check movement. So ma'am, can you wiggle your toes for me? Can you push down? Can you pull up? All right, and what toe am I touching? Big toe. What toe am I touching? Big toe. All right, very good. So we are now done applying the traction splint for this patient. A uh, few other considerations with traction splints, if you are going to place the, track, or the patient onto a spine board, which you often will, uh, you can never roll the patient onto the side of the traction splint. Uh, femurs are very uh, heavy bleeders, and so the patient can very easily bleed out if more damage is done to that. So you always wanna make sure that you roll them onto the opposite side. Uh, continue reassessing the patient, rechecking PMS, um, ensuring that they're still doing good, and that's about it. Thank you for watching.